he's contesting one of the posts in the UNC's internal elections. He's on the United Patriots slate. And uh, he's a well-known attorney. Let's welcome to our program, Attorney Kiel Takla, saying good morning to you. And welcome to our show. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Satish. Are you hearing me clearly? Yes, we are. We're hearing you perfectly this morning. Good, good morning to you and good morning to all of your listeners. It's nice to have you with us on the program. Interestingly enough, I had asked the producers uh, on a couple of occasions before to have you on the show to speak about some of the other things that you were involved in one way or the other, but it just never seemed to work out. I, I don't know why, um, but it's it's my pleasure to have you here this morning. And we're here to talk yeah. uh, specifically uh, UNC, NATEX elections, what's going on and all those things. Um, let's begin by by asking what might be an obvious question some people may have in their minds. You've been involved in a number of, of things that have taken you onto the national discussion. You've been championing uh, a couple of cases and, and, and all these things that have seen you um, making your presence known. Um, some of the matters that you've fought and all those things, well known, well documented, well reported on you yourself. You've been active on social media, having your discussions on matters that you believe the nation needs to have discussions on and all those things. Tell us about the decision to contest this national executive elections with the UNC. Why? Well, Satish, uh, incidentally, next year, uh, sorry, not next year, next week after this election, I will be celebrating 15 years as an attorney at law um, next week, Tuesday. Uh, it has been a struggle. It's it's my first love, the law. I One of the favorite, one of my most favorite things in life is to curl up and read law books or read um, books written by famous judges and, you know, learn jurisprudence from all over the world. Um, but there comes a point in your life and there comes a point in, unfortunately, in an attorney's career, he realizes that there is only so much, he or she realizes that there is only so much that the courts of law can do. I can fight for constitutional rights on behalf of citizens. I could fight for changes. I could fight oppression. I can fight you know, many other good causes in the courts of law. But if you understand the political system and if you understand our constitution, parliament is really supreme and the legislature is really where changes have to happen. And I've come to that point in my career where I want to do more. And I think that Apart from interpreting law in the courts and apart from vindicating constitutional rights, I want a strong political party to be able to set policy that can help people. I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago, I fought a case for a lady, uh, Ruth Peters. She had Gillian Barr syndrome, a Gillian Barr syndrome, however it's pronounced, and she was paralyzed from the neck down. When she went to apply for her disability grant, mm-hmm. They denied it to her and they denied it to her because a doctor put on her medical that she was 90% disabled, 90%, but she couldn't move from the neck down. So I don't know where the other 10% came from. Her grant was denied because the policy and the law said that you must be fully disabled. I don't know what that meant. We filed a matter in court, in the high court. We won at the high court. We lost at the court of appeal. We went to the privy council. And the Privy Council said, well, you know, we sympathize. We understand this doesn't make sense, but your legislation actually says fully disabled. And therefore, the practice seems to be that the doctor had to put 100% disabled in order for this lady to get a disability grant. And, you know, that hurt me when, when we lost that matter. So I feel now that the time has come where you have to try to influence policy if you want to help people. And that is why I've taken this decision personally to get involved in a slate with a slate of people who I think um, can make a difference, who can strengthen the United National Congress, win election next year and set the policies that I think would influence the country. Why do you think that the current executive or, or the persons who are contesting on the other side can't do it? My respectful view, and I've said this consistently throughout the campaign, there is a role and space for everybody in the United National Congress, um, even the detractors, even, you know, persons who have criticized me most 
virulently because I have decided to throw my hat in the ring with the United Patrons. There's a role and function for everybody in the party. Unfortunately, in my respectful and humble view, those who are there now have tried to win elections on previous occasions, and they have lost. They've lost in 2015 with a huge majority in government. They've lost in 2020. They have generally been unsuccessful. And while, yes, you can point to little things, little statistics to say, oh, well, look, we improved here, we improved there, but it's not enough. We need to be able to win the election next year in order to implement the policies and strategies and legislation that UNC members want that we think would benefit the nation. That's our political party works politics and political parties are supposed to coalesce around political ideas and values and and things that we want to see done on the national stage we come together and we put those things to our national executive and leaders and they are supposed to put those things into the national space through parliament and other executive powers so that is what we want and you have but you have to win an election to do that and my respectful view i've looked at it i don't think that the current team and i respect many of them there um I don't think they can do it. And so I have decided to offer myself, put my reputation on the line for whatever it's worth, put my you know, national um, profile on the line for whatever it's worth to see if that may be enough to convince the population to vote for the United National Congress. Of course, among, among my team, who I think, um, are, you know, all of the members of my team, I think, are also equally deserving of an opportunity and have the ability to take our party forward. Mm. The, this... It's really about track record in, in, in winning elections. I don't think they've done it. They don't have the formula. They've tried. I think the time has now come for for the team of United Patriots to do it, this, the, the praying hands team. Yeah. This executive election has shone a light on some things in the UNC that probably needed a light to be shone on or should have been left in the dark because from someone looking in from the outside who has no party affiliation or whatever else there is a there is an approach by some that I find to be not just troubling but disgusting because this is a democratic process the executive elections is nothing but a democratic process being held within the organization and yes. yet still there are some who are of the of of the opinion that persons who they like or they're not supporting because they are engaged in a democratic process are enemies of the organization and should be vilified and castigated and 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 cast out and whatever else and the go-to phrases Everybody who they don't like is a PNM. All of a sudden, as Anita Haynes said, you know, the UNC create more PNM supporters than Dr. Rowley ever did. Uh, but yeah. that's that's an aside. You can't get away from it because it's you know they're saying that on the PNM you have a PNM hymn book that they sing from. That's the UNC's go-to phrase. That whenever you, there's somebody who seems to be swimming against the tide, that person is an enemy of the party. There's a PNM. There's this. There's that. The next. The other. Whatever else. But I've I've been listening to some of the discussions on both sides. And do you think the message that the United Patriots slate is sending to the UNC's membership that listen, things are right. They've not been right. There's evidence to suggest that with all the losses that the party has sustained and everything else. Do you think that message is resonating? Um, you know, I want to be. I, I'm not an. I'm not an. I'm not very experienced in politicking. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've been involved in several campaigns uh, as a lawyer and as an activist to some extent in both general elections. I have. I do have some experiences, but from my experiences in this campaign, I have been walking and talking, especially in the Kuva North area, um, Tabakit, Kuva South, several other constituencies, walking and talking and speaking to activists in our party and ordinary members of our party. And in my respectful view, they get it. They understand. From the time you speak to them, they, the first word, you don't even have to prompt. They tell you, yes, we need change. What exactly that change is, you have to get into them. You have to get into it with them a bit. Mm-hmm. They need to understand that this is a Natex election. This is about the team the executive team. It's not about necessarily the political leader at this stage. It's an Atex election. 
um, what do you want to change? <clears throat> you know, we say, look, these are our plans. We we want to do this. We want party groups to work. We want congresses to work. We want the women's arm to work. We want the youth arm to work. We want to filter policy up. We want to know what your concerns are. There are some changes to this thing, this document in the UNC we have called the Constitution, which some members aren't even aware of. Um, and what are their rights under the Constitution? What is the party supposed to do? Um, what are the functions and arms and organs? There, there are some members who aren't sure of those things, <laughs> you know, but, but they generally get, the, the, they have the pulse. They understand that we have been in opposition for so long, so something isn't right and something has to change. And they get the message of change, I think, and they understand that we are not PNF. <laughs> they, when you have, when you're walking through, for instance, um, Claxton Bay side with a man like William Archie. William Archie on his own is an institution in the United National Congress. This is a man who uses his van, his private um, equipment to broadcast every single UNC meeting for the last umpteen years, cuts up the videos, <laughs> publishes them to spread UNC message on his own. Um, that There's no way he could be a traitor to the party or be labeled anything close to a, a PNM you know, personality or member. That that is absolutely wrong. And people understand that. And there are several members on our team like that. So I my respectful assessment of of the ground, to put it that way, mm-hmm. is that they understand, they get it. There are those who you have to convince. There are those who love um personalities on the other side. You can't get away with that because that is their party. They're loyal to them. Even the members who we feel who, you know, should not be there. I'm not calling names, but there are people who support them too. Mm-hmm. And that's because it's really about love of your party. So you have to say, look, this is nothing personal against anybody. But ultimately, in order to help you, in order to save our country, we need some change in the party to win the election next year to effect the changes that we want to effect. Mm. You know, I've, I've had And the I think op- that's a simple message that's resonating. Yeah. I've had the opportunity um, over the years to have many discussions when it comes to persons contesting this UNC Natrix election. In 2015, yes. there was a, a a very vociferous campaign just after the general election, and there were, uh, I think there were three slates in that one. Kamala Pasad Bisesa, Dr. Rural Munilal, led one, I think Vasan Bharat as well, who was also in that, yes. in that election. And it, and it was a brutal campaign. And then... Yes. The discussion was about, well, you know, we need to put things in place so that we can win the next general elections. Uh, history will tell you what transpired over the various Natex elections that you've had since then to bring us to this point. Uh-huh. Uh, we need to take a couple messages, but when we get back, we'll be taking a couple of calls. And I want to get from you. Um, you. You told us about some of the things that need to be changed. Um, and we'll delve deeper into that as to whether or not the discussion on the campaign is focusing on what needs to be focused on. For those of yes. you who may have joined us midway, we are speaking with candidates in the UNC NATX elections. Attorney at Law, Akil Taklal Singh, will be taking some of your calls after these messages as well. Stay with us. Innovate to elevate at Digimark Reloaded, the must-attend conference for micro, small, and medium enterprises. On Thursday, June 27th, join the Nova Committee at the Arthur Lockjack Global School of Business for a one-day conference focusing on strategy, technology, marketing, and customer experience. Tickets are $450 for members and $550 for non-members. Special group rates apply. Visit the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce website to purchase your ticket and for more information. 